I'm gonna share with you 10 effects built into Final Cut Pro 10 that you can start using in your videos today to spice it up a little bit, to level up. And you're gonna wanna stay tuned for all 10 effects because you probably haven't heard of all of these and they are gonna turn you into a pro editor in no time. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Noel Molt with Think Media. Now, number one is to use text pop-ups. This is really popular when it comes to YouTubers and it's pretty simple inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about and then I will show you how to do it. Now, let's get right into this video because we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, cheesy jokes. Welcome to the YouTube channel. So as you saw here, this text was popping up. Now I'm going to delete this and start from scratch to show you guys exactly how to do this. First things first, you wanna go into your text and I'm just gonna go ahead and use a custom one right here. I'm gonna drag this over. I'm kinda gonna resize this so that, you know, it's as long as what I am saying because I'm gonna have them pop up right as I say the word, it's gonna pop up. We have a lot to talk about. And it's gonna end right about there. So now that that's all set, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my text. Now that I have my text on the screen, it's pretty simple. What I like to do first is actually get in here and just cut them up to the words. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because it's actually really easy to retime these so that it pops up at exactly when you want to. But what I like to do is just really quickly go through and cut these up into the different words. Okay, that's not perfect, but you know, somewhere around here. Now you can see that I've cut up the titles. What I'm going to do now is start over here on number one and I am going to go to crop and then change this to trim. So if it's on crop, you don't want that. You wanna change this to trim. From here, all you have to do is take this right side of the box and start to drag it over, trimming off every single word except for your first word. Now what we could do is go over, click this again, go to trim and go ahead and do the exact same thing we just did, leaving our second word and our first word uh, visible now. Now we could just do this for every single text, but to speed up your workflow a little bit, you could do a copy and paste. All you gotta do is select one that you've already trimmed. You're gonna hit command C, go to your next one, and then you're gonna hit command option V. From there, it's going to chop off most of the words and you just have to drag it to your next word. Word. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with the rest of them and it really doesn't take that long and you get yourself a really cool effect by the end of it. Obviously on your last one here, you want to leave all the words visible and now we can go through, we can watch it and see if we need to kind of retime any of the words. Because yeah, we have a lot to talk about. So I can maybe move this uh, second to last word, latte talk about. We have a lot to talk about. Now that's looking pretty good and it's as easy as that. Just using the trim tool, you also could use the mask tool, but I found for stuff like this, using the trim tool has found to be easier for me. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to blur out a piece of the image, whether you want to censor it or hide it, you can definitely do that inside of Final Cut Pro 10. I've done this before for clients where they needed to actually blur out a brand or something in the background, like an address. And so I've had to use this before, but I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So first off, we have our clip right here and for this case I'm just gonna blur out my coffee cup because it's moving and I'll show you guys how to kind of move that around as well so the first step you actually want to do is to copy and paste the clip that you are going to blur and put one on top of the other so I'm gonna go ahead and move this right on top of there now we have two different clips now the top one is going to be our blur and we're gonna use a mask to control what we want to blur so let's start with our effects and actually going to pick out a blur there's two that I like to use one is just kind of your classic out of focus blur and the second one is more of a pixelated blur so I'll show you where both of those are if you go over here to blur you can see right here that if I throw this on top everything is out of focus it's a pretty nice blur this is kind of something that you would see on TV however I like to use the pixelate blur because it's just kind of fun and funny and so I like to use that sometimes if we click on all and we go to search for pixel we'll see a uh, pixelate right here and if we throw that on top you are going to see that it does this whole pixelating effect and you can really choose how much you want to do that let's get the coffee up here and maybe we want to make it even more blurry now that we have done our blur what we want to do next is pick our mask 
So I'm going to search for mask. Make sure you're dragging this on the top layer of your video. And from here, you can start to uh, draw a mask around exactly what you want to blur out. And we'll just go ahead and blur out this entire coffee cup. Now from here, it doesn't look too good, but you can start to mess around so that it fits around uh, whatever it is that you're blurring out a bit better. And then we want to use the feather tool. This is gonna make it look a whole lot smoother. You can even drag this past 100 if you would like. And so, you know, this is looking fine for me as far as a blur goes. I think it looks great. Now you can see the issue here is that the coffee cup kind of comes into the blur and it also goes out of the blur. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to move this blur effect over neat overneath over top of a moving object. So I'm going to move it to the first frame that it comes into, which is right here. And I'm just going to drag this entire masking tool with the blur effect over that mug. So that's right there. I'm going to go ahead and start my keyframes underneath your mask. You want to open up your transforms and then you're going to click this keyframe button right here on position. And I like to go about three or four frames and move the mask. If I'm moving it really fast, maybe I would do less every frame or every other frame, but for something like this, you can really get away with three, four frames. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just going to move forward three frames. Now that I've moved forward three frames, I'm going to move my mask back up, move forward three frames again, continue to move my mask, and I'm gonna do this for the entire clip. Now that I'm done, you can see that the mask is actually starting on the clip and I don't want it to start on the clip. So to go to my first keyframe, I'm going to hit this button right here and then I'm going to go back a few frames and move this all the way out. So as we go forward now, it's going to come up with the mug, which is perfect. So let's hit play and see what this looks like. Awesome, so the blur is moving around with the mug and it looks great and blurred. And the nice thing about this is, now that we've done a mask that's moving, we can actually replace this effect with anything. So if we wanted to change this to our other blur, it's really easy as just dragging this on top of the clip and deleting the pixelate button. Now we want to move this back up top, right where the pixelate was. And from here, you can mess with the amount of blur. You can make it more blurry, less blurry, and and you're gonna see that the same effect happens. All the movement have been kept the same, but now it's just a different type of blur. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys a little stop motion effect. I use this on my wife's channel where her name pops up and I kind of made this stop motion effect with her name and I did that all manually inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. So right here, I did a little text that says, hello everybody. And I'm gonna show you kind of what this effect looks like. Just kind of bounces back and forth, kind of like a stop motion vibe. So it's really easy to do this. What I'm gonna do is actually delete all of this, but keep one of my text. So first of all, you wanna start with what, it could be a picture, it could be text, it really could be whatever you want it to be to kind of do this effect. And so all of it is going to be the same, whether it's text, a picture, a graphic, whatever. So the trick here is to make your text three frames long, and then we're gonna go from there. So let's start by doing that. One, two, three, I'm gonna go ahead and hit B, which is the blade tool, I'm gonna to chop that off. Now I have this text that is three frames long, and what you want to do is hit Command C, Command V, and you're going to paste it. This next one, what you wanna do is go to your transform tool and you wanna adjust it just a little bit. You don't wanna do it a lot, but you just wanna change it slightly. You're then going to copy and paste that one right after it, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're just going to adjust the rotation a little bit, maybe even the positioning a little bit. Command C, Command V, and do the same thing again. Make sure that it's not too crazy all over the place or it might be a bit too much. But you guys will get the hang of this. And then once you have about six to 10 of these, you're just going to command copy all of them and paste those over and over again. So I'll just do a couple more here, adjusting it just slightly so that they look a little bit different, giving that stop motion effect. All right, now that I have done seven of them, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see how it looks. I think it looks pretty good. And once you're happy with how it looks, all you have to do is copy and paste that over and over again to make it as long as you want. So I hit Command C to copy, I'll hit Command V, and then Command V again, 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 as long as I want it to last. And once you have it as long as you want, you have a really cool stop motion effect to your YouTube videos. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to add overlays to make your shot a bit more interesting. So when I first started using this, I was actually adding some muzzle flashes to some guns for these little 
action films that I was shooting with my friends, but really this works for anything. If you want to do light leaks or any sort of glitches, stuff like that, this works really well. It basically just takes the black in a background image or a video and it makes it transparent. So when you overlay that onto your video, it's going to be transparent and the black will go away and everything else is going to be on top of your image. So right here, you can see that the video is pretty bland. And so I'm going to add some overlays just to spice things up a little bit. Right here, I have this glitch overlay, which I think I just got off of YouTube, but it kind of has these numbers, kind of techie uh, computer things going on. And so to get rid of the black so that it shows through, all you have to do is select the video, come up here to blend mode, and you're going to change that to screen. Once you've done that, you see that you get these textures coming through and there is no more black screen. Everything is transparent and it kind of adds to this cool computer shot going on. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with this glitch effect right here, which we actually got off of story blocks. And so I'm going to go to blend mode, change that again to screen. And this is going to add a cool little transition to my next shot. And so let me show you what this looks like now. I think it's really cool. It adds a lot to the shot. And again, you can get creative with this and add tons of stuff to your footage to make it look cooler. Again, those light leaks I've used a lot of times, different glitch effects, stuff like that. You can add on top of your video by using the screen blend mode. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this effect where it shows you the before and after. So if you're redoing a room or if you're doing like a color grade like I am doing here, you can actually do a sliding effect to show the before versus the after. Now right here, I have an adjustment layer and a clip and this adjustment layer is just adding in my color to my shot. So you can see this is what it looks like completely flat. And uh, then you have your adjustment layer. Now with this effect, you actually can't use an adjustment layer and I'll show you why later. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy this, I'm gonna delete my adjustment layer and I'm just gonna paste that onto my actual video. Now in order for this effect to work, you do need two clips. So I'm going to copy this exact clip and paste this. Now this would work exactly if it was your before shot and your after shot but for me I'm going to do before my color grade and after my color grade so the top one is going to be the after shot and the before is going to be the bottom so what I'm gonna do is delete everything on this bottom clip to make it flat again and you can see here if I mute this video feed on top our bottom layer is the before our top layer is the after from here you're gonna go into the transitions and you're gonna go to the search and look up wipe and then you are going to drag the wipe transition onto the top layer. You can actually delete this end one and then you want to extend this to make it a lot longer and I'll show you guys what this looks like now. So right now, you can't even see the top layer, you just see the before shot which is down here and then as it plays through, you are going to see this wipe effect where it shows you the color grade that I've done. You can adjust the duration of the wipe by dragging it left and right to make it longer or shorter. You can also click on this transition and if you go up here, you're going to see that you have a few different options. So if you want to go from left to right, you can also do that. So now it is dragging from the left side to the right side. You can also change the edge treatment. I usually like to leave this on feather where it just kind of blends in the two videos, but you also could do like a solid color like this and make it white or black and you can make the border color a lot smaller. And then that way it's kind of showing you the before after using a line of color to to distinguish the two. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever accidentally gotten like a shotgun microphone in your shot or a light in your shot? Like you can see up here, I have this light up there. It was not supposed to be in my shot, but it was. But luckily in Final Cut Pro, there is a fix that you can do for this. What you wanna do is copy and paste the clip that you are going to cover. And so we are going to cover up this light right here. So what I'm gonna do here is take this color right around here because it's gonna be you know about the same color. I'm just gonna drag that over the light and then feather it out so that no one can tell. In our effects, we're gonna be looking for the mask tool and we can just draw a simple mask. I'm gonna drag that on top. Now from here, I just wanna take this color, you know, about the same size of the light and then close that off. So now that we've done that, we are going to take the feather option and put that to 100 and then on our transform, or you can go to this right here, we are going to drag this up above. Now, if I completely remove the bottom layer, you're gonna see what's happening here. I'm taking this color that I just 
just got with the mask and then I'm actually going to feather this out a bit more so that it's much smoother and all you have to do is make sure that it's completely covering that up that light or the microphone whatever it is you want to hide in the shot you can do this simply by adding in a mask and dragging something over top of it and then by adding in some feathering you're really going to smooth out this shot so it looks nice and clean and now it looks like there was no light ever there so I can click this on and off you can see that's before and this is after another really cool easy trick that I use for our think media videos is Ken burn so you can see here that we have a few different b-roll shots and they're just pretty simple right they're not too exciting they're pretty boring there's not a lot of camera movement happening so what I'm going to do here is let me trim this one first but what I'm going to do here is add in some Ken burns and this is going to emulate a camera movement so all you got to do is click this arrow right here we're going to go to crop and down here you're going to hit Ken burns now here you have a start option and an end option so you can see it starts completely wide and then it zooms in ending a bit closer I'll show you what this looks like now it looks like there is a zoom happening and so we're going to do the same thing with this next shot but I'm going to show you a few more things that you can do with this so here we can see that now it's doing a zoom out where it's starting in tight and then it is coming and zooming out showing us the entire shot but if you want to switch that around so that it's also zooming in all you have to do is hit these little arrows right here and that is going to swap these for you so it's also going to do another zoom in for you and if we actually want to just switch that back it's as simple as moving that now if you want to make it really really drastic and zoom in a bunch you can move these around as much as you want I don't like to make it super obvious I like to do kind of a subtle zoom in or zoom out effect but whatever floats your boat you can definitely do and mess around with these as well after adding in those Ken burns you can see that this movement to the shot really just adds a lot to these b-roll clips and gives it a bit more spice and I definitely think it's something worth messing with because it can really take your shot to the next level just adding that little bit of camera movement really really can make a big difference. For this next effect, we use this all the time at Think Media. This is when our text swooshes in and swooshes out and we add in the sound effects. I'm gonna show you how we do that. So right here, you see that I have my name, I have my Instagram handle. All you gotta do is go to your transitions and look for slide. This is the transition that I use. You can drag this right over your image or your text and then you want to click on this transition and come up here and this is where you mess with the settings. So we have slide in, which is exactly Exactly what I want and then at the end it's gonna slide out and the direction I want to go is right so that's perfect that's kind of the preset that it's set to but you'll see here when it goes to the other clip that's not what I want happening so something wrong is here so I'm gonna click on this transition and we are going to go back up here we can see that it's set to slide in I don't want it to slide in I want it to slide out and for the direction I want it to slide to the left so it goes back that way now if we watch again slides in slides out that's perfect now from here all we have to do to make the null mult text do the same exact thing is hit copy and paste onto this one now it's not going to paste both transitions you need to go back up here you need to hit command c click down here hit command v now it has perfectly copy and pasted every transition onto both of them so when we hit play they both come in at the same exact time. They both go out at the same exact time. If you want to make these quicker or longer, you can drag this to the left to make it quicker. You can also drag it to the right to make it last longer, be a longer slide. And then you would just match these up so that they match. And this is just going to come in a bit slower. The next effect I want to show you guys is the handheld effect. So we're going to search for handheld and drag this over our clip. And this is going to give our static tripod shot a handheld look. So once we hit play, we're going to see that it looks like someone is holding the camera. They're a little bit shaky, but we can mess with those settings by clicking on our video. And up here in effects, we can mess with the shakiness and the distance. If we want to make it more shaky, we can drag it to the right. If we want to make it less shaky, we can drag to the left. I like to keep my shakiness around around 15 to 10 and then my distance I like to bring back down about to 10 to 15 as well and we can see what this looks like now with those settings 
It's definitely a lot less shaky. This is a bit more of my taste. And I like to throw this in on videos to just spice things up and get people on their toes. Cause when they're seeing the same shot over and over again, they can start to tune it out. So cropping in, cropping out, adding in these handheld effects. This is great for resetting the viewer's attention to get them to watch longer. Little stuff like this does wonders. And I think it's a really cool effect that you can add to your videos. I know I got a lot of questions on that in a previous video. So for those of you asking, that is exactly how I do it. Now I've actually had a lot of people ask me about this effect that I'm going to show you guys as well. And this is when the camera tracks on my face. So as I move my face around, the camera tracks with me. Let me show you exactly how I do it. And I use keyframes to do it, but there's a trick here that makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm going to drag this custom text onto my video, and then I'm just going to add in the letter X. It really could be anything. It could be a dot. Let's just do a dot. And I'm going to drag this right into the middle of my eyes. Now this looks really weird at the moment, but I promise you guys it's going to be a really cool effect. So on this clip right now, we have scaled the image so that it is a bit closer and you can see that as I hit play, I move my head around like this and I'm just going to do a little camera track on my face. Now the reason I put the dot right there is because for these keyframes, I want to make sure that my middle of my face stays in the center of the frame the entire time. That is what's gonna make this look really interesting, look really cool, and the camera kind of move with my head as I move it around. So now that I have the video selected, I am going to add a keyframe and I'm just gonna go frame by frame, moving this image around to stay on track with this little dot in the center of the screen. For something like this, I'll go forward every two frames, or if there's a lot of movement, I'll just do it frame by frame. But for something like this, I could probably get away by jumping forward two frames, adding a keyframe, jump forward two frames again, and adding a new keyframe. And for those of you asking, if you're brand new, once you move something around, it automatically adds in a keyframe for you. So all you got to do is start your keyframes once, and then we can jump forward two frames. Once you move it like this, you can see that this has a check mark. If I jump forward two more frames, you can see that it is not selected yet. There is no keyframe, but as I move this around, it adds in a keyframe for me. Jump forward two frames and just do this throughout the entire thing. All right, now before we watch this, we wanna get rid of this dot, so I'll delete that, and then I'm gonna hit the play button. All right, so that's pretty cool. So you can see as you're talking, you know, it crops in and it does this funny little tracking on the face effect. Again, people ask me about that one. That's exactly how I do it. If you wanna watch my Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials for beginners, then click on the screen and check out that playlist. I made it for you guys. So please check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video.